Nicholas Schaefer, designer for Antique Speeds, and I'll be demonstrating how to make a Kumahimo bracelet in a twisted spiral pattern and then add a little textural element to the piece. The materials needed for this project will be a Kumahimo disc. You'll need a, some sort of weight. You will need two colors of rat tail cord and one color of wax cord. You'll need a toggle clasp, a measuring tape. You'll need zap a gap, a pair of good scissors or a cutting tool, and you will also need some beading thread. In this Kumahimo project, I'm going to be using um, a different amount of rat tail here in, in the wax cord. And so what we're gonna do is I cut them all to length and we're gonna use an overhand knot Whereas before we've been slipping everything and doubling the measurement. And since we are using an overhead, overhand knot, I'd suggest go ahead and adding a little more to the length. So for a seven inch bracelet, which would be 21 inches, I went ahead and cut these like 24, 25 inches. And what I what we need is four strands of the wax cord. We need three strands of one color of the rat tail. In this case, I'm using black and then two strands of the ivory. And so what we're going to do is use this ivory as one color. That's what's gonna give us that little more of a textural element. And I'll show you when we get started how that works. But I'm going to gather all my ends together here and then I'm gonna run them through my, my weight and my split ring. I mean my jump ring here. You can go ahead and tie a knot and then slip this in with the jump ring, but I find it just as easy to tie this into my overhand knot. So this is also going to give us a different way to end the kumihima where we're going to bind the cords with thread and we'll show you how to do that. Just another way of ending and starting. Get all your little cord ends in there. so thick that's why it's a little more difficult to get everything through here because you've got so much going on and I'll show you how to load the disc also something else that was suggested to me and I just started doing it is keeping notes of when you load your disc and how your colors are laid out on your disc in case you come up with a pattern that you really that you really like and you want to be able to repeat it so I've been just taking notes in a little notebook and then I will go back and put it in, in color in a, in a nicer book just to kind of keep a journal, so to speak. And in fact, I'm even gonna use the notes to see how I need to load this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, we've got it tied, we've got our weight on there. I'm gonna drop it through the center. And then I'm going to place two black up into the north position here at the 32. And then I'm going to put the two ivory pieces together in the slot east here on, on the eight. And then on the other side of the ivory, I'm gonna add the other black. This one is gonna be a little thicker and that's gonna give a little bump or a little textural element to the, besides the wax cord being a smaller piece, it's really gonna make that come out really different. And then I'm gonna place the pink in the bottom position or the south position at 16, and also the other two pink over here on the west, which is at 24. You will often find that in instructions they refer to the positions on the disc as north, south, west, and east. Okay, and this is how we load how you're going to load it. And again, as I said, if you want to take this and, and make a little diagram, even I've done, I've done it in color, so that I know exactly where I've put everything. And this way, it's going to help you remember, if you like this pattern, how you did it, how to load it. And I'm going to get it started, show you a couple of rounds on this, and then I've got one that's almost completely done, and then I'll show you how to end it. So you get everything in here, and it's going to start off a little a little more thick, you know, it's a little thicker than usual. And another 
suggestion is that you may need to replace your disc as you do these things that are heavier. You just go through the regular motions, bringing it up and down and around. But your disc will sometimes get a little too loose and when your thread starts slipping out of there, you know it's time to replace it, and especially when you start doing things with beads and thinner threads. We'll go around one round and I'll show you how it looks. a good stopping point here and I'm just going to check my progress from the bottom here and see how it's looking and so you can kind of give it a little bit of a tug and you can see the braid coming along here and so now I'm going to show you how it looks when, a, when the piece that I have that's almost completely done and since we're ending this with a binding technique you can go ahead and do this way you know Till you're almost out of thread because you can adjust the measurement when you bind it so i'm just going to go ahead and go around and this is actually going to be end up being longer than what i would need it for but when we cut it even though we added extra inches and what have you but they also suggest if you wanted to do a necklace and a bracelet that you could account for the length when you load it and then that way when you bind it and cut it, you can cut it in different the different sections of lengths that you need for the necklace, say, and for the bracelet. It's just an, it would be a lot more thread to work with and you would need to use bobbins. But it's a good way to kind of get everything going at once. And again, you can see the, the little texture of it and how this kind of bumps out a little bit. And it's just really a neat little pattern okay and my threads are getting shorter so I'm getting ready to end Again, as you're doing this, this really needs to be off the table, so this is really pulling on it. But for the purposes of the video, I'm doing it this way for you to see how it's done. Okay, so as, as I'm getting down to the end of the thread, it's getting a little shorter. And it's, I'm getting close to really needing to, oopsie, really getting close to needing to end this because this is actually so short now that I'm at a good stopping point. I have way more than I need. So we're going to do this as we have done in the other Kumahimos is we're going to dab a little zappa gap on this portion right here. And this keeps it from unraveling when we take it off our disc. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to bind the end here after we measure it and see where we need it. And then we'll cut it and finish it into a bracelet. Okay, now that we've got it off our disc, I want to measure from this end, because this is my end that's glued. You can bind you know, this end if you wanted to use 
this portion of it. I only need about six, a little over six inches of it. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this end and I see basically where I want to be right about here. And what we're going to do is you're going to cut some beading thread. This is just a Ceylon beading thread and you only need about 18 inches or so. It really doesn't matter. You're not going to use all of it, but you're going to fold it in half to where one actually in half. You're going to fold it and you're going to have one tail that's a little bit longer than the other. And I'm going to find my measurement again. And you're going to take the loop, put it to the right side. I know it may be kind of a little hard to see with the thread here. You're going to make it a little loop and you're going to hold it here. And you're going to take the long tail and you're going to wrap it around the cording where you want it. So you're going to put the short tail on top and you want these to be nice and straight. So you're going to take this, and you're going to wrap it around. You want it to be, don't overlap, you want it to be running parallel and you can do it six, seven wraps, quarter inch, half inch, however much you think you need. This is what's going to end, and you can do it nice and tight. This is how it, we're going to cut the braid without it unraveling on us. So once you get it around so you're satisfied, then you're going to take this end, and you're going to run it up through the loop, and then you're going to take the short end, and you're going to pull. And I messed that up. <laughs> there we go. And then you're going to pull nice and tight. There we go. And you're going to make a square knot. This is where I said you needed a good pair of scissors to cut this because you don't want to hack it. You don't want to have a bunch of little ends or anything. So you want a nice clean cut through there. So what I actually tried to use was the little cutting tool that we use for licorice leather and it worked really well. But you want to cut between the bind, the binding and the knot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut right above where I have the binding. <laughs> okay, this worked earlier. All right, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and actually cut that. My nipper tool. But as you can see, we've got a nice cut here. And then I'm going to add some more Zappa Gap to this, just for good measure. Then I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to trim this end as we would we're adding it to the clasp and this time we're going to be using a toggle clasp made for the kumihimo and I'm just going to trim off all my little ends here And I'm going to test it to see if I can get it in my end. And I'm going to trim it up a little bit more, just as we've done in the, with the other clasps, with the magnetic clasp. And then once I'm satisfied that I can get that in there, I'm going to put some glue in the end. This has a little end cap on it, and the ring is fixed. And then the other end also has an end cap with the bar. Again, I'm going to use my Zappa Gap. Be careful, don't get stuck to your Zappa Gap. <laughs> and I'm going to place the end in there, kind of give it a little twist and a little shove in there. Since this is a little bit thicker than what we've done in the other, sometimes you may have to just kind of mash it. 
And when you bond it here, when you bond it really nice and tight, that kind of gives it a much easier, cleaner edge to get into the end because we've got a little more material this time. And so then what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to clip off the threads because I did go ahead and glue it. Again, I'm going to test my ends and give it a little bit of a trim. And it's going to fit. I'm going to add my zappa cap to my end cap. Should we get a good hold on it? And then you've completed your bracelet.